Hey, it's Mr. E over here, and our aim for this video is how do we solve problems that involve segments in and out of circles? Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is just go over the basic definition of a chord, secant, and a tangent, and then I'm going to give you some formulas and work out some examples. Okay, so first, let me give you the definition of a chord. A chord is a segment that joins two points of the circle. So here we have chord AB. It's a segment that joins two points of the circle. So it's joining this point and this point. So we call that a chord. That's chord AB right over here. This is, this is chord AB. It joins two points of a circle. Then we have chord CD over here. So a chord is just a segment that joins two points of a circle. Here's another chord. You need another example. See that? Joining two points of the circle. A secant is a line that intersects a circle at two points. And it goes outside the circle. So, you see, CE is a secant because it intersects the circle at two points, here and here. Let's call this point X. So it intersects the circle at two points, and it goes outside the circle. So CE is a secant. FE is also a secant. A tangent. A tangent is a line that intersects the circle in exactly one point, even if you were to extend it. So for example, FG is a tangent because it only intersects circle O at one point, right over here. Even if I was to extend the line, it would still intersect with the circle at exactly one point. CG is also a tangent because it only intersects the circle at exactly one point. All right, now look, OG is not a tangent. So here's OG. How come it's not a tangent? The reason it's not a tangent is because if you were to extend line OG, it would intersect the circle at two points. Therefore, it's not a tangent you're supposed to be able to extend it and it only touches the circle at one point. Okay, so those are some basic definitions of a chord, a secant, and a tangent. Now let's work out some examples. So, example one. In the accompanying diagram of circle O, chords A, B, and C, D intersect at E. If AE equals 4, CD equals 18, and CE equals 8, find BE. So you always want to begin these problems by labeling. So it says AE is 4, so we write 4 for AE. And then it says that CD is 18. So the whole chord CD is 18. And then it says that CE is 8. So CE is 8. Find BE. So I'm going to label BE X. All right, so how do we find BE? Well, to help us with this example, we need to use a formula. Since we're dealing with two chords, I'm going to use what's called the intersecting chord formula. And please write this down into your notes. So the intersecting chord formula says to multiply the segment piece by the segment piece by the other segment piece and set it equal to the segment piece times the segment piece. So what does that mean? Okay, well, let me explain. If you look at chord AB, the segment piece is AE, so it's going to be AE times the other segment piece in that chord, that's EB. So it's going to be AE times EB 
equals, so now we're going to look at the other chord. The other chord is CD equals CE, which is the segment piece, times the other segment piece, ED. Okay? That's one way to look at it. If, if you find that a little complicated, let me give it to you another way. Let me get rid of these letters here for a second. For those of you that are still confused, you might find this more helpful maybe. So I'm going to call this segment piece here lowercase a, and I'm going to call this segment piece here lowercase b, and I'm going to call this segment piece here lowercase c. Use a different color for the other chord. Lowercase c, and I'm going to call this other segment piece here lowercase d. So what the formula is saying is a times b equals c times d. It's just another way of saying segment piece times segment piece equals segment piece times segment piece. Okay, so that's what the intersecting chord formula says. So let's go back to example one. So how can we solve this problem? Well, we know what this segment piece is. We know what this segment piece is, and we know what this segment piece is. To find x, I need to use the formula segment piece times segment piece and set it equal to the other chords segment piece times segment piece. But I'm missing a segment piece here. I'm missing ED. Is there a way to find it before I even plug into the formula? Well, let's think about it for a second. CD, the whole thing is 18. Take a look at that. CD, the whole thing is 18. But this part is 8. CE is 8. So what must ED be? Well, I know that. CE plus ED should add up to give me 18. So that means that ED has to be 10. Did you catch that? Here, I'll say it again. CE plus ED equals the whole thing, CD. I already know CE is 8. I don't know what ED is. So I'll just leave it as ED. And I know what the whole thing is. I know the whole thing is 18. So 8 plus what gives me 18? 8 plus 10 gives me 18. So ED has to be 10. So now I can plug into the formula. So it's going to be this segment piece times this segment piece. So it's going to be 8. It's going to be 8 times 10 equals 4 times x. Segment piece times segment piece equals segment piece times segment piece. So that's going to be 80 equals 4x divided by 4, 80 divided by 4, that's going to give me 20, so x equals 20. So if x equals 20, that means that BE equals 20, because BE is represented by x. Okay, so that's one way that we can apply the intersecting chord formula. Let's look at another type of circle segment problem, and this one involves two secants. So example two says, assuming that the lines below are secants, what is the value of y? So to solve this 
problem here, we're going to have to use another formula. It's called the secant secant formula, or as I like to call it, the blind man's formula. You know, that. well, because you know, secant secant, get it? So it's the blind man's formula. Okay, anyways, I know that was lame. I know. The secant secant formula says the external secant times the whole secant equals the external secant times the whole secant. Let me uh, make this font smaller so I can fit it all in one line. Or as I'm going to be abbreviating it, it's going to be ES times WS equals ES times WS. So let me explain what I mean by external secant. So this is a secant right over here because it intersects the circle at two points and it goes outside the circle. And when I say external secant, I'm referring to the part of the secant that's outside of the circle. So this is what I mean by external secant. And when I say whole secant, I'm referring to the sum of the part that's inside the circle and the part outside the circle. So that's what I mean by whole secant. Same thing with the other one. This is my external secant. And the whole secant is just the inside part plus the external secant. Alright, so that's the formula with the, when you have two secants. The external secant times the whole secant is equal to the external secant times the whole secant. So let's see if we can use this formula for our example here. So I'm going to write the formula first. External secant times the whole secant equals the external secant times the whole secant. a little sloppy in here. Let me fix that. Okay. So, this is an external secant here. Six. The whole secant here is going to be six plus eight. I have to add these two segments to get the whole thing, 6 plus 8 is 14, so the whole secant is 14. The bottom part, the external secant is 7, and the whole secant, again, you have to add, so it's going to be 7 plus y, or y plus 7. Not, not, 7y, please know the difference. There's a huge difference between y plus 7 and 7y. Huge difference. So now what we have to do is just substitute into the formula. So the external secant here is 6. So I have to multiply that by the whole secant. So it's going to be 6 times 14 equals the external secant, the external secant here is 7, times the whole secant, that's y plus 7. Just as a little side note, notice that the, when, I, when, I, when I multiply, I multiply the external secant times the whole secant in which that external secant is in. So it's, it has to be 6 times 14, not 6 times y plus 7. Okay, so moving on. 6 times 14, that's going to yield 84. So we get 84 equals, we have to distribute the 7 here, 7y plus 49 minus 49. Because we have to solve for y now. 84 minus 49, that's 35, so we get 35 equals 7y, divide both sides by 7, 5 equals y.
example three. In the accompanying diagram, PC is tangent to circle O, PBA is a secant, PC equals 6, and PB equals 3, find AB. So we're going to begin by labeling first, PB is 3, so the external secant here is 3. They want us to find AB, so I'm going to label that X, and then we're told that PC is 6. So how do we find X? Well, we can't use the secant secant formula because that only works for when you have two secants. And here we have a tangent and a secant. So let me give you the formula for that. The tangent secant formula. So the tangent secant formula says the tangent squared, or we could say t squared, equals the external secant times the whole secant. So the tangent is the point from where it touches the circle to the point where it's going to intersect with the secant. So this represents the tangent. And as you know already, the external secant is the part that's outside of the circle and then the whole secant is the part inside the circle plus the external secant. So that's the whole secant. Okay, so let's use that formula to solve example 3. So it's going to be T squared equals the external secant times the whole secant. Okay, so the tangent, that's 6, so it's going to be 6 squared equals the external secant, that's 3, times the whole secant. What's the whole secant? Again, you have to add. So it's x plus 3, not 3x. Please remember that. So it's going to be the external secant 3 times the whole secant. The whole secant is x plus 3. So 6 to the second is 36. So we get 36 equals, got a distribute up here, 3x plus 9, minus 9, minus 9, 27 equals 3x. And divide both sides by 3. So 9 is equal to x. So going back to the aim, the aim was how do we solve problems that involve segments in and out of circles? Simply put, you can say by using the appropriate formula, by using the appropriate formula, so when it comes to segments in and out of circles, you can choose from three formulas. The intersecting chord formula, the secant, secant formula, or as I like to call it, the blind man's formula and the tangent secant formula. Now, which formula you're going to use, it all depends on the problem, okay? So you have to look at the context, you have to read, and you have to choose the appropriate formula for the problem. All right, I hope this video helps. This is Mr. E from NYC. Take care.